Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Josie. If you haven't been here before and we haven't met, I host this podcast mostly all about knitting and some other crafts. Yeah, I'm excited to be here to talk to you about my July makes. I don't have any finished objects and I have two knitting whips and then some fun acquisitions and plans slash brainstorming slash requests for help from you guys uh, to give me pattern ideas. And then at the end of the video, I'll talk about my favorites of the month. So um, because we don't have any finished objects, I'll just jump right into the socks that I'm working on, the Una socks. I finished the first one, so it kind of counts as a finished object, right? Finished the first one. It's stocking it on the bottom of the foot with the lace pattern continues on the top. Um, this fits really well. My first sock, well, the length fits really well. I haven't blocked it yet or anything. Um, but my first sock that I made was too loose. I did 64 stitches, vanilla sock pattern, um, six, 64 stitches on a 1.5, US 1.5, and it was just a bit too loose. Um, I'm worried that this one is going to be too loose as well. This is only the second sock I've made for myself. I enjoy making socks, but I've made like two for my mom, one for my sister, one for my husband, and just this is the first one I'm making for, second one I'm making for myself. But I'm worried that once the lace pattern opens up, that it will be too big, which will be sad because it's really pretty. I made the smallest size, there were only, it's a two size pattern. Um, so I'm hoping it's not too big. I've never knitted lace before, so I know people talk about how when you knit, knit lace and then you block it, it like opens up and blooms and looks a lot better. But does opening up mean it's going to get like a larger fabric? <laughs> I would think so. And but it's really cute on right now. I am excited to see like all of the, to see it just look really nice. So it's been really fun. So I'll show you where I'm at on the second one. I have two more chart repeats, lace chart repeats, until the heel. I feel like the leg is what takes me a long time. I feel like once you turn the heel and you start decreasing, gusset decreases, you're already working on the foot of the sock, so you're just like, oh, I have three more inches left there, you know. It just goes so, it just goes a lot faster once you get to the foot. The leg is the hard part for me. But I'm also having a lot of fun working on my cardigan that I'll show you in a little bit, so um, this hasn't taken priority. But it's been super fun, and I really enjoy the lace pattern. So I'm excited to test it out and see show you my thoughts of the pattern once it once it's done so yeah super fun the yarn I'm using is ash and bumble 8020 sock colorway lace it's really beautiful I am really it's a two-ply yarn and I'm really loving knitting with it it's been a really just joy to knit with so I'm just playing along on those. My, uh, for a little update, my yarn cozy is still working very well, holding the yarn in there with no tangles. So that's been really fun. Yeah, there's no deadline on those. It's still summer. I'm not going to be wearing them for a while. But I'm hoping that in the fall I will be able to, to start wearing them. But I'm just having a blast on my intricate socks that are coming out exactly what I was wanting and they're definitely satisfying the craving for something beautiful to put on my feet. 
So for my second whip, I have made a lot of progress. That's the Ozetta cardigan. I, I said that last time too. It's the Oversized Seasons cardigan by Ozetta. Um, the yarn I'm using. Is Valley Yarns Northampton 100% wool for stood weight. Color weight is charcoal. And so far, I'm really enjoying. I'm really enjoying working with it. I it's not doesn't seem scratchy when I've like put it on and tested it out. It doesn't seem scratchy. But I don't know. But ooh. done so much okay I'm gonna sh you can see the progress progress marker on the band and then I'll show you the back as well because that's my other progress marker it's so fun it's so squishy I'm just having so much fun knitting this really once I got the arm like joint under the arm <laughs> it looks so dark in the viewfinder I hope you can be okay but once I've joined in the underarm it really has just flown um it's definitely I mean it's taking a while but it's just been really fun so I'll put it on so you can see what it looks like so far and it's just really fun to try it on and be like oh it's actually coming together <laughs> So I don't, uh, uh, people who have knitted this before can maybe see, these are my buttonholes. I am modifying it a little bit. I bought more balls than what was called for with the hope of extending it because I believe in the pattern pictures, it comes up to about like right I have high-waisted pants on, so it's a little hard to see, but, like, it looks like it comes to her hips, like, a little bit lower, but I would like it to come a good four inches lower. So, I have added, after the third button bang, or, I'm sorry, the third buttonhole, you were supposed to start preparing for the ribbing, and I'm just doing another, like, button hole section or sorry another like four inch section between the buttonholes before I start preparing for the ribbing but as soon as I get done with this ball so I have the I'm close I would say I maybe have like an inch and a half until the next buttonhole as soon as I get done with this ball then I'm going to work on my sleeves um and that way I know how much yarn I have for the body. But I'm just having so much fun working on this. It's just, it's really fun. I've never made a cardigan before. And it's so squishy. Like, even on, it hasn't started itching me. Which is exciting, because it is a very economical yarn. So I knew it was a risk. I didn't see, I haven't seen anyone review this yarn. Or use it. So, but it's working. I'm really enjoying it. And I just love how squishy it is when I uh, take it off and fold it up to put in my knitting bag. You know, I just do, hold on, I want to show you. I just fold it up like this and then fold it up like this. And I'm like, oh, it's a pillow. <laughs> so I'm so excited to have this. Um, my husband is in a wedding in September that we're both going to and I, the ceremony's outside and it's in Virginia, West Virginia. It's close to DC. We're flying into DC, that's what I know. But the ceremony's outside and I was thinking this could be just a really, this could be a good deadline. I like having deadlines that aren't too serious but um, it's not the end of the world if I don't have this in time. But 
I'm hoping that by September I could have this done. So that's my new deadline. It's the end of September. So I have a good seven weeks. I think six or seven weeks to finish this to make that deadline. And I think it's totally doable. It's just been such a joy to knit. So much fun. Okay, I can't stop talking about it. But I should be working on the sleeves. I should finish that ball of yarn and start working on the sleeves um, this week, I would think. It's August 4th, no, August 3rd as I'm filming today, so um, the wedding's not until this September 24th or something. There's plenty of time. Um, it's just been really fun. I can't wait to be done and give you more like fitting and stuff, but so, so, so far it seems to fit really well and so far extending it, modifying it was very easy, just adding another four inches of a button, like one more button, repeat before preparing for the ribbing, so it's been really fun. Those are my two whips. <laughs> um, I have been dying to cast on some other things, some yarn I bought, but I just, I haven't, I haven't done it because I'm having so much fun with those and I know one more thing will just delay these getting done and I'm having so much fun, so I'm patiently waiting. Um, but I do have a little bit of acquisitions and plans. The I went on vacation to Wisconsin and got some yarn there. When I got I was able to stop at three yarn stores and I bought from two of them. And then Amber from A Lovely Yarn sent me a very generous package uh, filled with yarn and fiber and some goodies and notes and um it was so generous but with her box i figured i would just share that yarn as i start using it um and i don't know what i'm going to use it for i got some sock yarns which would be really fun so yeah i'll share her yarn that i'm using that she gave me and fiber and things as i start using it uh, i'll show you what i got from wisconsin the, the first store we went to it was like a little general store with a tiny yarn store up upstairs. No one, no one working in like in the tiny yarn store upstairs. Um, I was just alone. My mom and I were just alone. But it was really cute. If I had, I took some video footage. I can't remember if I took video footage of the yarn, but um, I definitely took some video footage from vacation, and I'll just add a few clips if I'm like overlay clips if I'm talking and you don't need to look at what I'm talking at because there are some really pretty we we went to the Green Bay Wisconsin which was close to the Wisconsin Dells but it was a little bit more easy of a drive with our one-year-old and we just we had a lot of fun we had a house right on Lake Michigan right on Green Bay Lake Michigan and it was it had a beautiful screen and porch the weather was beautiful it wasn't too cold, it wasn't hot, it was just really nice, so we had a pretty, pretty chill vacation and got to do some shopping. So the first store I bought things at was, was Knit Wits Craft in Bailey's Harbor, Wisconsin, in the Door County, uh, Wisconsin area. And I'm very, I was very excited about this store. It's very cute. And they have a lot of yarn that I wanted to feel in person. Like Rowan and Malabrigo and one other. I can't remember. But, so I bought, I bought something from there. And my parents bought me an early birthday present. So I bought this. It's a Rowan, what's it called? Creative Linen. I believe it's 50, it's 100 grams skein, two of them. It's 50% 50, 50 linen, 50% cotton. And the color weight is straw. It was on sale because the yarn store was discontinuing them. Uh, and I bought two of them thinking that I would have enough to make the two for tank. I'll put a picture up. I love that it's reversible. You can kind of get two styles, two shirts in one. 
and I think this would be a really pretty color because I really like the pink tank that I made but I think I would be able to wear this with a little bit more so my favorite color of bottoms is like black and then an olive green and I think this would go well with them whereas I can't wear the pink tank top with olive green I could but I don't like it as much so yeah I'm really hoping I have enough yardage to make the two for tank um, the, des the description on Ravelry before he bought the pattern didn't really, it didn't give sizing, so I don't, I just assumed that I was a smaller size, and then I bought yarn for like two sizes larger than my assumption, <laughs> if that makes sense. I hope I have enough. So I have 200 grams of this to hopefully make a tuber tank, DK weight. And then this is the one that I am incredibly excited about. It is the, fi the Fiber Company. That's the other yarn because I did buy yarn from there. The Fiber Company. This is Road to China Sport Weight. It is the softest thing, the softest yarn I have ever, ever touched. Um, it is 65% alpaca. 15% silk, 10% camel, and 10% cashmere. Uh, like I said, it's sport weight. 159 yards in this 50 gram skein. I believe. Yeah, 50 gram skein. I bought the color Mother of Pearl, and I bought three of them. So I have three. I was really hoping for four. These are the most expensive yarn I've ever bought. Well, I guess I really, I didn't buy them. My parents bought them for me. I would not have bought them, honestly. But they were just so soft. And they were like, let's buy an early birthday present. <laughs> um, so I was really hoping for four or five skeins. But they only had three. And I asked them if they had more in the back of this color. And they didn't. And I just didn't love the other colors enough to get more of them, if that makes sense. But I'm, I am a little bit stressed of like what to make with them. Cause I, it's so soft that I want to be able to wear it. I don't want it to be a hat or like a, a scarf or a shawl or something. Cause I thought of the Sophie shawl, but it's just so soft that I want to be able to, I don't want to have to wear like a scarf. I want to be able to wear it inside and just feel it and sit and be comfy. So I was leaning towards a vest. And then I also thought about the ranunculus. I really want to make a ranunculus, but every time I start to look into it, the fact that it's so adaptable and so flexible depending on what yarn you use intimidates me. I just, I back off. I'm like, oh yeah, I can't do that. I don't fully understand patterns that have specific yarn weights that you're meeting a specific gauge. Just, I get, I do not get the ranunculus. But I was gonna, I was like, oh, but I can make it with this yarn, uh, but I needed, I think I need a five to make it. Um, so I started looking, trying to find a vest pattern. I found a tank top that was cute, um, but it being like such like alpaca and camel and I didn't want a tank top I don't think I would use, but I do think I'd wear a vest. So I started looking. I found two vests, vest number two by My Favorite Things Knitwear and another vest by a designer I haven't heard of. I'll put both pictures up. But I am just scared I'm not going to have enough yarn. I'm just scared that I won't have enough. I started looking on like Ravelry for people that use this yarn and what projects they use this yarn. A lot of people use the Sophie Shawl. Um, but I think I saw one, I'll put pictures and credit the people who took these pictures, who their projects are, but I think I saw one project that used this yarn and I was like, that looks good. And with the best number two, cause it has a v-neck, it wouldn't be as much yarn up here. So that would save a little bit of space. I'm basically hoping my goal for this would be to have enough yarn to 
have like thicker straps where it could be I could just wear it on its own or I could wear a shirt underneath and so I would want it to be long enough to like meet my high-waisted jeans as well and I just I don't know if I'd have enough so if you have how do you go about oh it's just so soft <laughs> how do you go about when you are unsure if you have enough yarn how do you have confidence in picking a pattern? I would love advice. Because I want to use every scrap. I don't want, and like I said, I just want to be able to wear it. So ideally, I would love a vest. And together, all three skeins, I have about 159 times three. Say Siri. What is 159 times 3? I have 477 yards total. That's not a lot. But maybe it's enough for a vest. I do, I want it a little bit looser, but I know I can't give too much positive ease because that would just take up more fabric. <sighs> oh, and there was one woman who I saw, um, I just was... I randomly watched one of her YouTube videos that was recommended. She was very cute. And she was wearing the best number two. And it was very, like, encouraging. Yeah, that could work. But the both, both best that I saw I think would be cute. So, anyway, give me your thoughts. Let me know how you... I don't want to pay yarn chicken, but I will if I have to. So let me know how you end up... How you go about picking patterns when you're... Just not sure if you have enough yarn. Okay, so that was the first store that I bought things at. The second store was Icon Fiber Arts in De Carey, Wisconsin. I bought Queensland Perth sock yarn. It was self striping, I believe. I wasn't able to find a picture of what this colorway looks like. It's Mount Wellington. It's an 80 20 superwash wool, 20% nylon. Um, it's Australian superwash wool blend. I have only ever seen Queensland cotton. Be used by a crazy sock lady and her like dishcloths and things but I've never seen it in person and I was feeling it and thought it felt really nice and I just wanted one sock yarn from the vacation I like the idea of having a sock from made in the yarn I bought from vacation and I also bought some Haya Haya Sharps um, flexible double ply needles I and still on the hunt for my favorite way of using of knitting socks. I have the small set of uh, Chiagu shorties set. Um, they're sock size set. The circulars. And I really like I really like them. But I think the cord is a little bit too flexible. The, my first time using 9 inch circulars on for socks, I had 1.5, uh, US 1.5 9 inch circulars, fixed cable needle, and I loved it. It was so much fun. I was doing the, um, like these like mountain socks that used a lot of knit and pearls. I'll, I'll put a picture up, but, um, the, and I really loved it and had no issue with it. But using the small circumferences with the Chiagu shorty set, I think the, knee, the cable is just a little bit too flexible where I just, I have a hard time managing my stitches. So I wanted to try these with knitting socks, especially more intricate socks. I like having the longer needles for like lace work and like, you know, mini cables. But you've probably heard, if you've been here before, you've heard me say the magic loop, I just can't get rid of the laddering. And so I want to try this. I want to see um, for 
intricate socks. See how I like it. Not many people use these, and there could be a reason why not many people use them. But I'm excited to try. I'm excited to try a different way of knitting socks. So yeah, two from this other store. It was very fun. The other thing I wanted your opinion on was if you had any favorite sewing patterns for like a quilt, um, a crossbody purse and or a dress that's nice enough for a wedding, a beginner's dress that's nice enough for a wedding. Actually both patterns need to be for beginners. I am definitely a beginner sewer. But I really am loving the quilted look, like Vera Bradley quilted look. Um, but I want to make my own, you know, purse if I can. So yeah, I've, I've been searching, haven't found anything that I really, really love. So if you have any favorite sewing patterns for like a quilted crossbody purse and or a beginner dress um, for a wedding, doesn't have to be very nice, like a, you know, a Sunday dress or cocktail dress, let me know. I've been looking for those. That's all my acquisitions and plans. But now we'll get into the favorites of the month. Um, I finished Wing Feather Saga and it was so good. It was really enjoyable. I loved the storyline. I loved the family dynamics and it's um, definitely some sad parts. Uh, it doesn't shy away from hard things like scary or just like death and grief, but it really is beautiful. It's a beautiful, kind of like Harry Potter. I always say that Harry Potter is a beautiful representation of good versus evil and good winning. Not to spoil the story, but um, that you know, evil does win some battles, but it doesn't win the war. Kind of the same mentality that you that they there's several times where you think, oh, they won. The, the evilness has won, it's, it's, but it doesn't. It, it was just really good. So I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed that series and highly recommend it. Um, I've really been enjoying journaling this year as like, I feel like I always get into more like journaling, kind of like scrapbook journaling when I do a lot and we just do a lot in the summer. So I have like fun memories I want to document and uh, like my friend's wedding that was the blast and beautiful and wanted to document those so getting more into like watercolor and painting acrylic painting stickers all the fun stuff uh, for journaling so that's been really fun um i did want to share two youtubers that i've just really been enjoying um and i haven't seen them in a while but they posted this month and it was very exciting. It was Meriwether Knitting, Gabriella from Meriwether Knitting, and Leslie from A Friend to Knit With. I love their podcast. If you haven't watched, you should really go and check them out. I feel both of them I could be, I just feel like I'm their friend. <laughs> I love their style. I love their heart behind their making. Um, it's just really fun. Gabriella seems to be closer to my age uh, and she has two daughters and I just love her heart behind making. I love that she wants to make her house a home and decorate it with handcrafted items and I feel the same way. Yeah and, and Gabriella's just mindset behind crafting and she, she sews sometimes. It's just very inspiring. I have found myself being very inspired this summer over, almost to a point of like overwhelmingly ins inspired and I don't know <laughs> how to turn off my brain and thinking oh I could do this or I could do this and this and this and I'm just like I can't do it all and so I just need to stop but embroidery has really been inspiring me I've tried embroidery before and didn't love it but I really enjoyed punch needling and definitely had a better hoop and so I'm like, oh, I could try it again. I have this wall in our home that I really want to decorate with fiber arts. And so I've been like collecting some knitted 
knitted like wall hangings and designs and then I just I can't have it. I, I even found a cross stitch bird at, at the thrift store that is beautiful that I want to hang up there but I can't have a fiber arts wall without embroidery because embroidery to me is just so inspiring and so beautiful but I don't love I haven't oops the one time that I made it I didn't finish and it just wasn't that enjoyable but it was a kit, it was a cheap little pad, a cheap little starter kit from Hobby Lobby. And so I'm thinking if I invest in a little bit of a nicer hoop, maybe some nicer fabric, that I would enjoy it more. And it being my own design as well, because I would, you know, make my own design. But I haven't, I've been very inspired by it. I feel overwhelmed by everything I don't know. Uh, but it, it's very inspiring. So yeah, go check out those channels. They're super fun. I, she, I don't think she's ever talked about embroidery before, but uh, yeah, I don't know how I found that, so, that topic. But I just want to share it with you, be, feeling very inspired. Maybe you can relate of feeling so inspired sometimes that you just kind of freeze. You're like, I don't know what to do with all this inspiration. I can't do it all. So yeah, so that's it. I hope you had fun. I hope... Um, you let me know what you're working on. Um, if you are able to take the time and give me some advice, I would appreciate it. But yeah, let me know what you're working on in the comments. I'd love to meet you there. Like and subscribe if you want to and you want to uh, stick around. I, as, as I'm filming this, I have 300 subscribers, which blows my mind that you on the other side of the screen um, look forward to me posting because I know for my favorite YouTubers that I subscribe to, I'm like, oh, they posted and I can't wait to watch their videos. And the fact that 300 people have taken the time or just have had the desire, that even that little inkling that I want to follow up with her is very sweet. Um, and you've, always, you've been so kind in the comments and I've really enjoyed getting to meet you. So thank you for taking the time to do that. And yeah, I hope you had fun. I had fun. I will see you in just a few weeks. Enjoy the rest of your August. Bye.